I'm Lima Milan, and in this video, we're going to take a look at Ableton Live's Wavetable device. So Wavetable is named after the concept of what makes the sound within the synthesizer, which is Wavetable synthesis. So ordinarily in subtractive synthesis, you have a single or more layered waveforms, and then you choose what that waveform is, and then it goes to a sequence of amplitude and filtering shaping. Now, Wavetable Synthesizer is similar in respect that the sound that's created can be shaped with amplitude and filtering and modulation sources and so on. But the core source sound is different. So whereas Subtractive is about that one oscillator type that provides the sound, Wavetable Synthesis is an index of different waveforms. So if you take a look at Wavetable, which I have loaded up here, and we just load in a initialized form of it, this is our oscillator one, and this is our wavetable. We can change the position of the wavetable by moving between these four wavetable indexes. So we have a sine, we have a saw, or we have a triangle, sorry, we have a saw, and then we have a square. And it will actually morph between these as we move as well. So if I just uh, sequence in a single note, you can hear how this works. Just go for something quite low as well. So as I said, sine wave, triangle wave, sawtooth wave, and square wave. That's the fundamentals of wavetable synthesis. So you have two oscillators in Ableton Live's wavetable. That by default, the first one's turned on, the second one is not. And then as I mentioned earlier, after that point, it goes through a more classic subtractive synthesis processing section. So we have here a filter section. Now the filter section can be a choice of filter type for the first filter and a choice of filter type for the second filter. Again, we have buttons to turn these on and off as we want them. And then we have a routing option here, which is running them in series, so one after the other. Running them in parallel, so the signal is split into two and runs through both filters, and then the output of those filters is heard combined at the output. And then we have the split function, which routes oscillator one to the first filter and oscillator two to the second filter. After that point, we have our modulation section, which again is like subtractive synthesis in the respect that we can use either envelopes or LFOs or low frequency oscillators to be able to modify the parameters of something within the synthesizer. So we have an amp envelope, which is dedicated to being amplitude and controlling the volume of the instrument. And then we have two other envelopes, which by default are not necessarily assigned to anything. We can add those uh, assignments ourselves if we feel we need to. We also have LFOs, which are typical of uh, the other instruments within Ableton Live, where you've got the choice of the, the actual LFO shape itself. Then you have uh, an aspect of choosing to fade in the LFO over time, so it can become, like a, if it was assigned to pitch, it becomes a slow vibrato and so on. We have the choice of having it either running at a hertz value, which is a continuous running value, uh, which is not necessarily musical in its timing. And then we have the sync option, which is incredibly musical in its time and very rigid and mechanical. And they both have their strengths and weaknesses for certain applications. And then as we normally have with an LFO, as opposed to an envelope, which always starts and stops when you strike a note and let go of the note, and it goes through the different stages of the envelope, the LFO also has a re-trigger function. So every time you strike a note, the LFO will restart on its movement as a shape um, again, so that the timing of the LFO is reconfirmed when you, you strike a key. So we've done the wavetable, we've done the filtering section, and then we've looked at the modulation sources. Now the modulation destinations is really where we can start making wavetable live and breathe. So the matrix section is a simple assignment uh, XY matrix. So if I wanted, let's say envelope two, to alter the wavetable position, we can pull up the value to have the wavetable be pulled up by envelope two as the envelope goes up, or we can go to the matrix and set a negative value, which will pull that position down as the envelope goes up as well. So it's a, a, an opposite polarity. So I'm gonna just set this to initialize state again, load that in. Let's just play a simple rhythm part. Okay, so you may not hear that at the moment. It's an incredibly low 
um, frequency that's being played, my MIDI note is currently at F0 to G to G sharp. So it's the absolute sub-region of the signal. So this is a point where we can choose what part of the signal is going to come from the wavetable, and then what part of the signal is going to come from the sub-oscillator, which accompanies the wavetable. So if I turn on the sub-oscillator, by default it's down one octave. So what I can do here is actually just deliberately set the wavetable synth, and let's put it on a, a buzzier sawtooth there. Pull down its volume just so we don't get blasted with its volume to begin with. And then have the sub play the low frequency. So let's just set that to the same octave as the note rather than one octave or another two octaves below it. And let's just get a balance of the, the sub signal. So the tone changes the actual uh, wave um, shape of the uh, oscillator. This is not wavetable synthesis yet, this is just changing the actual type of oscillator that this is. So let's go to our wavetable here for oscillator one. And let's just experiment with what happens when we start modifying the position of the um, wavetable position. So it's actually turned down, so let's just pull that up. Okay, with these basic waveforms, it's not particularly exotic at the moment. So what option, one option we do have is to choose some of these default wavetables. So let's just skip through these and see what seems to work with our subtone. So you'll notice that the first wavetable we had loaded in by default had four different um, wavetable indexes, which was the, the th four types of uh, waveforms that were in there. This one's a lot more complex. You see, I can't count how many there are, but there are many different indexes here, so many different uh, waveforms within the uh, wavetable itself. So if I sweep this, you'll hear a much more complex sound. So we have two options at this stage of how we want to make that wavetable live and breathe. We talked about the modulation. So if I go to the envelope and I go to the matrix, uh, or in fact, if I just say, I'm gonna go for envelope two, and then I go to the matrix, and the last thing you click is gonna be the last thing that's in focus here. So let's make sure it's the wavetable position, and then let's play around with that envelope shape. then go to the envelope two and change its shape. So we choose how long it takes to pull the, in this case, the wavetable into, it's in a negative uh, assignment. So it's gonna pull the wavetable position down. And we can offset the starting position. Okay, I'm not completely convinced on that, so let's just move back to another wavetable. The modulation assignments is still in place, so we can audition the movement that's currently set up on the wavetable in different wavetables as we load them in. So the next option we have of making this wavetable have uh, different types of tone. We've loaded in different wavetables, but we can also uh, manipulate the properties of the wavetable. So that's what this section's here for. So it's called effect mode. And if you have it set to none, it doesn't modify the properties of the wavetable at all. But we can have an FM-like behavior here by setting the, um, the uh, mode to FM, increasing the amount, and you'll see that it's starting to massively change the nature of the waveform across that wavetable. So let's just have a listen to that. And again, because I'm clicking that and moving it, it's showing up on the matrix. And th this is what I find the best approach is when we're, we're gonna put some sounds together with wavetable is you find an interesting spectral change to the sound or a way to, to manipulate its properties. And then you think, well, what would I want that to do over time? Which of the modulators am I gonna to assign to it? And you, you go from there really. So I'm gonna 
this is quite rhythmic, obviously. We, we've got notes that are playing quite a frantic rhythm, so it, it lends itself very well to envelopes on this one, but it could be if it's more prolonged, held, sustained notes for pads, you might want to choose to use an LFO instead that can drift and, and make a, a value uh, move up and down. So I'm just going to try a positive and a negative polarity to see what seems to work in the context of this FM amount control for the wavetable. So two very different things. We've got like a chip tune kind of uh, sounding uh, uh, bass sound there, and up here we've got a much more frequency modulation type of sound here too. So let's just quickly go through the other modes. So we've got classic mode, which applies a lot of the um, classic kind of hardware synthesizer property changes to a waveform. Pulse width, which is changing the symmetry of a waveform, and then sync, which is just changing you know how rapid the waveform is. So let's let's play with those values too. So let's apply the same process and make this a little bit richer. It's, there's a little bit of a hole in the sound between the sub sound and the higher harmonics. So I'm going to load up Oscillator 2 and just play around with another sound for this. And I'll maybe change its tuning if needed to make it fit into that hole that I'm describing. So let's go and go to this modern version, which will give me another type of skewing of the waveforms or the indexes within the wavetable. So you notice again, even things like uh, tuning can be altered with envelopes. So in fact, let's set that to zero and use envelope three, because we've not used that. That can have maybe more of a percussive transient shape. And because these are incredibly complex waveforms, there's some really nice moments where these two different um, wavetables that are producing some really interesting uh, content, they'll have a phase relationship with each other at certain points when either they're playing just statically with no movement alongside each other and also when they're modulated in different directions at different times too. And that's literally what I've just found and I've just adjusted the matrix there to make sure that 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 pitch aspect and that warp value worked best of this oscillator 2 wavetable on top of oscillator 1 as well. So this is a nice tone now. It's time to start thinking about the subtractive aspect which we've covered here. So I can pull a low pass down and then quite easily use an envelope to pull that low pass up. That will immediately tighten this up. As we have with most of the filters now in Ableton Live, we've got the modeled uh, synthesizer filter types as well, and they come with drive controls often, so we can use that to really enforce the, the power behind the sound. Let's run it in parallel, so we've got one version that's not being filtered, and turn that filter on for that, and we can maybe have that one run in an opposite direction. So this is a high pass filter, meaning it's cutting out the bass. And let's have a look at the frequency position for that, the cutoff. And let's get that to move in a different direction as well. Okay, so finally, before we finish, just a couple of other things to point to. We have a MIDI section where we can make it respond to uh, MIDI data. 
the classic velocity, uh, no data, pitch bend, and so on. And then we've got music polyphonic expression, the, the MP, which has been recently added into a lot of the devices within Ableton Live. Um, so that can be used to have programmed MP data control uh, polyphonic note data for um, Wavetable, or if you have an MPE controller, it gives you a lot more control over the properties of one note to the next as you play the instrument as well. We have a polyphonic mode, we have our voices mode as well, glide, and then finally, various different flavors of unison. So a classic unison mode where we have a number of voices and then the amount of, let's just pull that down, of that unison. And if I just go through the chooser menu, just clicking and using the arrows, you'll hear the different tonality that we can get. So going to our matrix, there's also a time aspect. So I was just reaching for the envelopes then to wonder what it will sound like if I either extend some of these envelopes now that I've got this new relationship of all these sounds. We can also do it globally here. And then we have the amount control, which is about the modulation. So that is no modulation happening. It was at 100%. It goes up to 200%. So it goes a, a beyond what I'd set it to with more, um, more uh, stronger applications of these modulations. So set that to 100. And we can automate these as well to make them change over time. In this video, we've had a look at Ableton Live's Wavetable device. What Wavetable synthesis is, how Wavetable's device actually incorporates subtractive synthesis, and how we can build a sound from scratch using many of Wavetable's parameters.